we're going to start recording. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, let me go ahead and close that tab out because we don't need it. Let's go back to here. And let's get out of here and go back to our class. We're going to be looking at the beginnings of the end tonight. Uh, we don't have very much to do, folks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this module, which is module five. We're going to break it up into two parts, mainly because um, from what I'm seeing in the live text, I'm not seeing as much as I thought I would see by now. And I want to make sure to give everybody a little breathing room to get things in. And also because this module five, the irresistibly aging and assessment. So the assessment piece we will do next week uh, because the things I need to show you tonight, it's going to be a lot of Steve going click here, click there, go here, go there. So it's going to take up more time than I normally take up. And then when we look at assessment, uh, there's some things I want to talk about with assessment um, that have to do with how we use assessment. But uh, they also have some other things in there that we need to look at that are click here, go there, go there, go there. I want to stress to you that the things that we're playing with that require a login, that you are more than welcome to use my login, that sbswan02 at louisville.edu, ULIT241. You're more than welcome to use these if you want to get in and really get in and actually play around in it. Um, what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to do a little bit of chit chatting here about select these levels of engagement and all that kind of stuff. But then uh, we'll go straight in and I'm going to show you some, I think, some pretty interesting stuff. Um, we're going to kind of settle in on these three areas. We're going to take a look at Buncee. Uh, Buncee is a way for you to make interactive content uh, available to your class uh, in, in the Google Classroom. So remember, at this stage of the game, everything we're playing with from here on out and back into a classroom, okay? And I realize that those of you who don't have classroom, you've just been building it for this course. Yours isn't going to look as sophisticated or as complete as somebody who has one. So don't worry about that, just so long as I can find things. This isn't a class on Google Classroom. That would be another course that I'm gearing up to start teaching around here. We're going to be looking at that thing called Buncee, which is just plain fun, frankly. But it can do a lot of neat things. Simulations, we're going to be looking at that. Um, if you're a science or math here, and really you don't have to be um, elementary, middle, or high, but you need to know about FET because it is one of the best things out there, in my humble opinion. So we're going to be looking at it. Uh, this is one that just came across my attention. This is the KB, KET PBS Learning Resources. Again, um, one of the things we don't give enough credit to in this state is the KET folks. I've been involved with KET for, gosh, as long as I can think the KET has been around. And um, my good friend Larry Moore was up here last uh, talking to the faculty at large, and he and I just kind of caught up with each other afterwards and sat down and had long conversations about some of the cool things that KET is gearing up for. And he was asking for if I'd be interested in helping him do some of the stuff. So it was, it was a good meeting. But anyway, he showed me what's new in the KET learning resources. And again, things that have hooks built into Classroom. If you wanted to give this module a, a subtitle, it would be uh, Module 5, Irresistibly Engaging Assessment, subtitled, Hooks for the Google Classroom, okay? Can you hook me into the Google Classroom? Can you hook me up with the Google Classroom? Uh, here's some more interactive resources. Of course, you know the Padlet. We played with the Padlet. But I also want to do a little bit of time looking at screencasting. Now, screencasting is not what I'm doing right now, okay? This is video sharing. Screencasting is where you literally can capture what you're doing on your screen and then turn that into um, video, obviously, that you then can put places for kids to have access to. Now, uh, in the past, I've talked about using a lot of these tools, but I pretty well have settled on this one right here called Screencast-O-Matic. Especially if you're a Chrome user, uh, you can have Screencast-O-Matic work inside your Chrome browser for free, by the way. 
And uh, the first link up here says everything you know about screencasting. It covers all that, how that works. The beauty of screencasting is I can literally sit here and put together either an introduction or an explanatory that might be supplemental. In other words, I've taught that day, but I also have this other go waiting for kids when they get home, they can look at it. Uh, and again, if you do it the right way, what, what is the right way, Steve? Well, when you screencast, when you go to save it, you can save it down as a separate digital file, in other words, a video file, or, or, and what this is what makes Screencast-O-Matic sit up and just be noticed, is you can create a YouTube account and put it in your YouTube account. And so now anybody with a phone can get to the stuff that you've created. So we're gonna be looking at that. And then, like I said, next week, we will come back to um, assessment. Because uh, in here, we got a lot of stuff in here. Uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, some of the, well, let's talk about formative, assumptive, iterative assessment. Uh, then we're gonna look at Google Forms. I'm still in love with Google Forms. I have not lost my, you know, we're still dating, seriously dating. Uh, Socrative, if you are a high school person, you need to look at Socrative. The rest of us need to look at Nearpod and ed puzzle ed puzzle is i don't know how to describe how much i love ed puzzle it is one of the all-time i think very very best and if you can convince a school remember part of what you are in this course is proselytizing you to get out there and start pushing these ideas into your schools if you all can buy yourself a ed puzzle account you'll be using mine and if you want to use mine to create your class, in other words, a, a, a class that you can actually use with your school um, that will then feed the results of the Edpuzzle data back into yes, Square, the Google Classroom, feel free. Use that as a, as a platform um, to show, you know, whoever in your building can help make these decisions about getting an Edpuzzle account. You're going to like Edpuzzle. Okay. So let's get going with tonight. So Phil Schlechty is a thinker that we kind of said hi to back in the day when we were looking at our Fullen book. And Phil actually lives here in Louisville. And he's one of these people who's been around forever in education. He doesn't look like that, by the way. <laughs> he, um, he is a really interesting guy. But it's kind of like, everybody's kind of like, yeah, yeah, Phil, Phil Schlecht, yeah, I know about him, I've read about him. But I still think he has some really uh, important things to say to us, especially about engagement. And since this is what Mike's been writing about, is this idea of the irresistibly engaging classroom. So here's, here's where I come down on this thinking. We're playing with a lot of stuff tonight that can be, quote unquote, engaging. And we're going to try to make it as engaging as we can because we're creative people. What he is saying, though, is engagement is active. So if I have a if I have a lump sitting in my classroom, I don't know how much of this engagement I can get them into if that's going to be their position is being a lump. But what I can do is make this stuff available to them in their time and in their space so that maybe by that I can get them hooked in by saying, all right, you didn't pick it up today in class, but if you go home, it'll be sitting there waiting for you. Watch the video. I'm not gonna make you sit through the video. Uh, oh, by the way, I thought I had a way of being able to capture the audio out of the um, YouTube video in, uh, Collaborate Ultra, and they sent me the directions, and I just sat here and started laughing because their their directions read something like this: Get a pair of external speakers, <laughs> plug them into your headphone jack on your computer, and set them around your microphone. Well, thanks. I knew that. All right, so let's uh, dive into this. Let's get busy here. So the first thing I'll take a look at is Buncey. So what is Buncey? Buncey is nothing more than a fancy interactive PowerPoint that is easier to do than anybody can make PowerPoint interactive if you understand how to code in Visual uh, Basic. 
Now that should have put everybody running to the exits right there. So no, but with Buncee, it was built from the ground up to be an interactive and to have hooks that go over to the classroom. So let's take a look at it. So here's Buncee. Um, we can all log in. It's not going to throw us out. And I'm already. And let's let's just kind of look at what some people have created, so you can get an idea of what you could do. So let's look at this one from Josiah. And so as you can see, he's put some stuff up here. He's got a picture. He's got a video about joining type problems. And then he's got a place down here where I can write about it. And he's got a little graphic over here. It's kind of cute. It sort of shows things being joined together. Kind of neat. So how do you do this? It's really, really easy. So let me, uh, oh, yeah, let me show you what you do then. So after you've got it all made, you come over here to share. And this one's kind of interesting because it's like, hey, Steve, where's the, where's the Google Classroom? Well, it's kind of hidden, but it's here. But notice down here, you could allow people to comment on it if you want them to. In other words, how was the lesson? Did you like it? Was it anything you thought you could learn from? If you really think it's cool, you could put it copyable so other people could see it. And what happens is the Buncee has like a Buncee store. And basically, you can find other people's stuff. Hint, hint, hint. You might want to look in the Buncee store. But to get it to my classroom, all I have to do is click on social. Dun, da, da, da. There it is. And then it says, which class? And of course, I've got 14 gazillion of them here. And I can go down and pick my class. Then the next thing it'll ask me to do is what do you want it in the class as? You want it as material? Do you want it, you know, as an assignment? How do you want to put it in? Simple, simple, simple. All righty. So let's go back and take a look at creating one. So I'm going to click on the Create button. Oh, look, they've updated it. Isn't that nice? Introducing templates. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create in that. Let's see what it looks like. And when I do that, it says create a new Buncee already. Oh, here you go. So here's our templates that they've now added to it. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of they're trying to figure out what in the world's going on with these. Oh, look, Pi Day. That would have been fun. Um, okay. May I go and just do a from scratch? Let's do that. So I might want to have a background. Right now, what is my background? It's white. So if I'm dealing with something where I want kids to not be terribly distractive, I might leave it at white. Or I might add a background. Let's see what I can do here. So with my backgrounds, I've got all of this. Notice over here, I can just do a color if I want. I can go to the web. What was I doing? Was I doing the thing last time? Yeah. So let's do space. Okay, so I'm going to do space, and I'm going to find me a cool background. Oh, I like that one. So I'm going to throw that in. And it says add to this page or all pages. So that's the other thing you need to realize about Buncee. You can build a little Buncee lesson so that you can, put, you can front load it with content. And then the last slide would be we might put, well, you'll see, you can put a test in here. You can put a uh, video in here. You can do that. Or you can put it on every single page that you create. Well, I'm just going to do this one page. So I'll go ahead and say this page. Thank you very much. And as you can see, when I do that, it's now ready for me to do something with the page. So over here, where it has the other plus sign, is where I can add in my items. So I'm going to click here. This is where it starts to get really kind of interesting. Let's look. We can add text. Shapes, drawing, Buncee animation, a Buncee sticker, Buncee message, an emoji, interesting. Web image, we'll look at that in just a second because that's really nice. A 360 image. We can go and steal from the Khan, excuse me. We can borrow from the Khan Academy. We can go and borrow from YouTube. We can upload things. We can import a URL so we can go somewhere else. We can record a video. We can take a photo. 
We can put in an FRQ, we can put in a QR code, and we can put in a multiple choice question. Okay, you with me? So let's go ahead and notice up here I can search for images and things, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do text for right now. Let's learn about orbits. Okay, that's what I'm gonna call it. And I type in here, I need to look down and make sure what my color is. I don't like that color right now because that is not going to show up very well. All right, now let's try typing in here. Let's learn about orbits. Okay. Now, on this one page, I can slide it around, put it wherever I want it to go. Um, and down here, you can notice you've got some things here that let you play, like you can change the opacity of it. But right now it's looking pretty good, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to drop back down into here, and now things, you know, I, I really can spend some time playing around in here looking for cool stuff. So let's see what Buncee Animation might have. That, By the way, this is not the uh, poopy emoji. This is the Buncee uh, sign. I, if I were them, I think I'd think about changing that, but, you know. Um, let's see. Trending. Let's see what people are trending. What is cool out there that I could put in? I'll tell you what. Let's just make it easier to put in space and see what happens. Okay. All right. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. Now this this might be something. Let's see if this is what. Yes, it is. It's exactly what I thought it was. Okay, so I'm ahead and I'm going to add it. And now I've got this little animation going on over here of the moon orbiting around a planetary body. So I'm starting to get a sense of what I can be doing here. Now I can go back into here. I'm curious about these 360 images. Let's go see what that looks like. Let's just do space and see what we come up with here. Hmm. You know what? I'll tell you, let me just grab one and throw it in because I'm curious about what this looks like. So let's grab this third floor one. Let's add that in. And again, let's pull it down where we want it on screen. Notice how I can, you know, move anything around I want, and I can change the size of it. And I can also uh, tilt it, you know, to make it look kind of cool. All right, now I realize this has nothing to do with orbits. Don't yell at me. But when I click on that, I'm not sure if it's going to, I think what it's going to let me do is to, you know, move that around so I can see where I am. I don't know if I need to have VR goggles or, you know, Google Cardboard on or something like that to see it. So I'm not too happy with that. So I'll just get rid of it. Yes, I'm sure I want to delete this item. Okay, so I've deleted that item. And I'll go back in one more time and take a look. Now this time, let's go and do the YouTube video. And this one's easy. Let's see if I just put in orbits, what it comes up with. And I've got some choices here, some good choices, it looks like. <laughs> Orbit use in combat. Boy, what middle school boy wouldn't love to see that one? And I've got some heavy-duty ones here that I could put in. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one right here. I'll grab that one, and I'll add that in. So now I've got a video, and I'll make it a little bit bigger because I want it to be what it's about. Okay, so again, I've got something here that I can look at. Now, for our final thing we want to add, let's go over here. So we have the ability to do a free response question, or I can come in here and do a multiple choice question. Okay. 
and then I'll come down here. Go away, grammar. I jumped in because I spelled orbits wrong. My keyboards here are starting to act up. All right, so orbits are usually <clears throat> square, round. And we'll make this one elliptical. And I could keep going. You know how this works. I could keep adding in. My keyboard is really acting up. U S U A L L Y. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. It's not typing in the, the letters at the beginning. Okay. Let's try it one more time. U. Let's just go ahead and leave it at orbits are. <laughs> Orbitar, save, bam, and I've got that here. I'm going to have to do the same thing with um, my color so it'll show up. I don't know why that didn't kick in. Oh, it's free response. I'm not doing free response. Thank you very much. So now I've got all these pieces in place out here. And if I wanted to keep going, I just come back over here where the pages are, and I can add a new page. Or I can stitch it so that it would have things that would flow into the new page. I don't have anything like that, then that's okay. Okay. Let me get rid of this and let's bring our test over here. Looks good. Change that color. Okay. You get the idea. Now, the beauty of Buncee is when they when they do this, when they do these pages. You have the ability to have it send it back over into the Google Classroom. And within Buncee itself, you can create a class where it will store the data from if you put these little, you know, formative quizzes in it. As we were showing you earlier, here we go. I don't have a title. Fine. I will give it a title. I like programs that basically go, hey, and fix any mistakes you might make. I'm going to go social. I'm going to go Google Classroom. It's going to ask me which class. I'm going to put it in Swan Science. And then down here, I'll make material. And I'll say go. It'll ask me to fill in the blank. I may have to swap out keyboard here. Okay. Watch and take quiz. I swear you all, it's not my typing. It's the keyboard. Take a pause for a second. If you're talking, we've lost your audio.
I can see that you've turned it on, but I don't hear a thing. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, let me make sure that not only do I have that turned back on, but let's make sure we have the recording still recording. Good. It records. I love how it records everything that happens, you know, so if you screw it up, it records that. If you do something good, it records that. All righty, so... That was Buncey in a nutshell. Very easy to set up, uh, very straightforward, not a difficult program to understand or to use. I think the reason why I've grown to like it is it does have quite uh, a simple interface to create content. Let's go back into it here as soon as I get back down to the module. So we want to try something else while we're here. And this is, um, this actually has a name. It's called app slamming. Okay. And so here would be the thing I would be curious about what would happen if I created a Buncee And I used a link from these other places that we're going to be playing with here in just a second. And would it then allow those other places to actually function as well? I'll show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and grab. You don't have to grab backgrounds. You can just, you know, do a color. But I'll, I'll throw a background on here. Now let's go over here to the items. Here's what I'm thinking. So if you go over here and you look at the import the URL, would it let me now go and grab a link that would represent one of these simulation interaction things and put it into my Buncee? Let's go see what happens. So let's go to Buncee. Let's back up. Let's drop down in here into simulations. Um, let's go ahead and do the FET one. And I'm gonna drop into Earth Science and let's do gravity and orbits. I was going to show that one anyway. Now notice I have got the ability to send this straight over into my Google Classroom. And I could go ahead and I could build all the things around it and so on and so on. But what would happen if all I wanted to do was to grab it and throw it into the Buncee? Let's see what happens. In other words, will it work? So I'll go ahead and copy it. Yes, I'm working on a tightrope right now. I have not tried this. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. Where's my linky? Paste that right in there. OK. Hmm. Let's try that again. Okay. So as you can see, they're not going to let you do that inside of Buncee. I imagine that probably has to do, well, look up there. It says insert a YouTube video or image or to add to your canvas. Got it. I'm done. Sorry, kids, I can't do it inside of Buncee. But what I can do inside of Buncee is I can create a very nice closed environment where I can uh, put a lot of stuff in for kids to see. And, you know, I, I just did, how many things I put in here? I did one, two, three, 
we've got our video, we've got our title, we've got a little cute thing orbiting up here, and then we have our questions. We have one, two, three, four. You know, it could be more than that. And remember, when you click on things, you can change their sizes. So if I wanted to have more than one little quiz, you know, I can, I can shrink this down and make it a little bit smaller. Uh, or the other thing, of course, I could do is bring that over here and bring that up to there. And now I got more, even more room to add more quizzes on this side. So Buncee's simple, cinchy, easy. Now let's go look at the next thing, which are our simulations. So going back to where we are, we were looking at the Buncee first. Now we're going to drop into simulations and we're going to start here with math. I mean with FET because it doesn't get any better than this. It really doesn't. So what we can do when we're in here is um, it does everything by grade level. So it's not like this is only for high school kids. You can, and look, you can go up to university. Hell, oh, interesting. So let's go into elementary. And now we've got area builders, we've got area model decimals, we've got balancing act, we've got arithmetic. We've got lots and lots of fun stuff that we can include that is a part of our classroom. That is, can be interactive. Here's what I was playing with earlier. So I've got this gravity orbits thing. I'm gonna click on the Google Classroom symbol. It's gonna say, which classroom am I gonna put this in? There's my science one. And what's your action gonna be? And again, I'm gonna create a material. Now, if I wanted them to interact with this and then leave a comment behind, let's see what happens when we do that. So let's go create a material and we'll say go. I don't think they can make private comments on class materials. They, okay. can make, they can make a classroom comment where everybody can see it, but they can do a private comment where it's just between the teacher and the student. Well, and that would be a decision we'd have to make, wouldn't it? Yes. So in other words, if, if I wanted to crowdsource it, in other words, let's see what we all think about this, I would do it with material because everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to make it a thing, you're going to do this and I'm going to grade you on your reaction, then you would make that an assignment, right? Correct. Yeah. So, you know, again, we're, we're back to that big topic of classroom that everybody kind of struggles with, which is classroom has these kind of, and I'm, I'm not vague, but they have these, these areas that look exactly alike. The only difference is who can see it. Let's go in here and post that one. Let's do it. So what I want to see, so if I go here and I click on my thing, and there it goes. So now I can play and report back my findings about what I did while playing in here. And of course, the beauty of it is, is when I'm through playing, and if I just close it out, it throws me right back here. I mean, it throws me right back into my classroom, and I am ready to give whatever I want to you know, put out there. Let's look what else we have in FET. Um, high school is rather intimidating. You ever looked at this, Carrie? Yeah, we use it a little bit. Um, I know the chemistry class specifically, they use it. The physics class specifically uses it. I teach biology. There's not much biology. Um, no, there's not. Mm -hmm. At least the last time I looked, there wasn't. And then in my integrated science course, I'm working towards getting them more interested in things such as this. So, so we like we like FET. I like it a lot. I think yeah. it's one of the best tools out there that gives kids or gives teachers uh, for kids to play in. It's not just a one-shot deal. You can really have a good time working around in here. Let's drop down and let's look at the social studies simulations. There's some good ones in here, 
Um, the thing about them is these were made uh, five to 10 years ago, but they still hold up water, especially if I'm doing simulations in a social studies classroom. And I could see where I could build this into something much bigger in my classroom. And this would just be the prompt or the ping off spot. As you can see, you can look at it right now. And you can see it's old school HTML. And so this would probably just be my, my way of kind of, let's set something up and get kids into whatever it might be. So if we went in and did Cold War, and you could tell right there how old it is that it has to have flash to get it to work. I'm going to stop there because I don't need to, to do all that. Normally what happens when you do something like that, the little button pops up here and says, do you want to use flash? Fine. But there's still good stuff in here. Let me show you another one that um, I actually saw used. Yeah. Connect with Haji Kamal. So in this one, this is making decisions and how decisions then affect. So the activity design uh, for you to do as a culture class homework, um, you need to see things from the other person's point of view. And as you can see all these different ways of that it talks about with branching and making good decisions, um, having, having evidence that helps you understand what you're going to do so on and then of course um understanding what a argument is about and i don't mean an argument is you're stupid you're dumb an argument means here are my here's the information i have here's the primary source material that i'm relying upon to make the decision i'm going to make that one's that one's interesting that one's pretty good actually gizmos we were playing with gizmos before we went online um, gizmos is another one of these uh, simulation kind of things it is, um, unfortunately, as you can see over here, the only two things that it links out to are Twitter and Facebook. But there's still some good stuff in here. There's still some pretty decent stuff in here. And it's worth you taking the time to kind of poke around in here and look. I always start up here where it says find gizmos. And I would go to gizmos by topic grade because you, it's just easier to find things. Uh, you could sign up for a free account and you don't have to pay anything for it. Um, as you can see, Chocomatic, multiplication arrays and areas. And when we, we had our, we were all excited because we saw this share thing over here and it was like, oh, <laughs> how sad. But, you know, no harm, no foul. We know that we just go up here and grab the link and we can put the link in inside the assignment um, in our uh, Google Classroom. And then there's even some more stuff over here that you can pull down and put in to help kids. Let me give you a sense of what it looks like. So I'm going to launch the gizmo. Click and drag on a grid to make new models, move models and bars by dragging them. Okay, so I can do this. And so, you know, the question is, what is it that I am demonstrating here? I'm demonstrating it two times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's 14. Uh, I can do something as simple as that, or I can create a border, so on, so on, so on. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Now, let's jump back out. So we took a look at simulations. We like simulations. Let's look at what's sitting here in the PBS Learning. So here's the main door in, PBS Media. Uh, again, let's go look at, um, I've been all over the place. So let's see what we can find in terms of mathematics. Their stuff is very heavy into the um, media side. So in this video, she so must stop at a cousin's birthday party. Unfortunately, she is delayed when she runs out of gas. She gets five tires. You're running out of time. My goodness. Poor, that's a bad day. 
uh, makes a decision about which route would take the least amount of time. She basically, da, da, da. okay. So, you know, here's the key right there. Bam. Y'all getting tired of me doing this? And then, bam, and then bam. Okay. Now, this one, again, we need to think about what are we going to ask the kids to do? Is this going to be something we'd ask everybody to do uh, as a global thing? Or we want individual inputs. Carrie and I, you heard us talking. Individuals, we do an assignment material we would do for crowdsourcing for everybody to give an answer. So that's PBS Learning Media. Good stuff here. And again, as I said, you can go in either through any of these. Um, and then the standards, I think the way it does it, oh, look at the next generation science standards. Good for them. We can do national standards. Now, that's kind of, a, that's kind of sad because a lot of these places have done, they'll, they'll actually go into the, uh, the standards for uh, states. But boy, that's a bunch of different. That's that's good. Okay, pop back out. So that's PBS. Couple more. Class tools and Gen Z. These and cool school cool tools for schools. I will give you a heads up on these, especially if you're elementary people. Um, be very, very clear about what you're getting yourself into with these. Um, some of these are really good and some of these, just meh. So if you go into Ginzi, uh, basically they have little widgets that they will let you get into. Uh, I don't think they do. In fact, I know they don't. They don't do hooks over into the classroom, but they do. If you do copy the link and put it in, it works. Primary games. Again, it's free free stuff for your website. This would be sort of in the kind of a fun thing for kids to do. As you can see, it wants me to download it and then I can upload it in. They're all vetted, so don't worry about getting something in there that would might get you in trouble. Class tools. Class tools is a really interesting. It's sort of a hodgepodge of all kinds of things. And as you can see, it does some interesting stuff. It has everything in here from little games that you can make. You can create your own Pac-Man game that you can put in. You can do a QR generator. Um, you can create. This is where I stole the uh, ability to make those uh, different uh, Images, you know, the alphabet soup stuff. It's all kinds of interesting things in here, but it's not just making things. There are other things in here as well. So you need to kind of have an idea of what you're looking for and then drop in here to see if this is what, um, if it has what you need. And what else do I have here? Cool tools for schools is gone. <laughs> All right, I will take care of that. Then there's this right here. This is a, a web link uh, that takes you to this guy's website. Um, Rich, I actually know Rich. His stuff is pretty cool, but it's not something, it's not necessarily a place where you go to get things. It is, uh, I don't see my microphone working again. Yeah, he is. Okay. This is, this is, he does the curating and then he puts things out there that would be, um, you know, interesting for you to put into your stuff. Now what's changed, what has changed, because he has, he's been around a while. What's changed is his stuff is now um, Google class friendly as well. Okay. So you look over here, he's got all kinds of, of crazy things. And then uh, down here would be where he would kind of go in and find where he's gone in and done sort of the look before. And he's decided that it's worth uh, taking a look at. And then there's some oldies, but goldies in here. Starfall, been around forever. 
Shed Aquarium, been around forever. You get the idea. Some of these are really, uh, and they're still good, don't get me wrong, but these have been around forever. Okay, so that's our interactive resources. Let's go look at the last one, screencasting. Well, do you know Padlet? I have to do Padlet. If you want to make a Padlet and put it into your Google Classroom, um, just go log in as me, create your Padlet, and then when, it, when you're finished, it will let you share it out. Like if I go do this one, I can share it out and, oops, don't want to remake it. I want to share it. Thank you. I can share it out by making it public and I click on the share, export, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And boom, there's my Google Classroom link again. Okay. Like Padlets. We used them everywhere. Last thing, screencasting. So screencasting at one time had a lot of various uh, screencast tools. There was Screencastify. Um, heck, QuickTime you know, on a Mac will allow you to do a screen capture. There was, um, no, I forget the name of it now. Screencast-O-Matic has kind of stuck around because something very simple. It has stayed up with what is going on. So if you want to use it, one of the things you need to do, hey, Carrie, can you hear me? Sure can. Can you hear me, dear? Yes, I can. All right, I'm not, my microphone light went out. I was just a little bit worried. I'm sorry. Had to make sure you all could hear me. So let me show you how it works. If you put the Screencast-O-Matic extension into your Chrome browser, you can screencast straight from your Chrome browser. So let's show you how it works here. I'm going to click on Screencast-O-Matic. And nor normally what I do is I go right up here where it says log in and I log in because I have a Screencast-O-Matic account. Now, why do I have a Screencast-O-Matic account instead of just using a free one? Very simple. If I do a Screencast-O-Matic account, I can record longer than the free one will let me. I think the free one lets me record 15 minutes. I think, let me look real fast here. Well, the Screencastify, which is what I use, is 10 minutes. Okay. You can download the free recorder. I don't even, I don't, I would say don't even do that. Try doing this, start recording for free. And the first thing it does is it tells you that I'm available in Chromebook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when you do that, what it does is it basically puts the little uh, thing at the bottom on your, on your Chrome browser that you click on and poof, off you go. You start recording. When it's done, the cool thing about it is, and it literally just reports everything you do on the screen. Now you can do other things. You can do other things, there it goes, uh, once you're in here. But let's kind of take a look around at what we've got here. So as you can see, I was right, Carrie, 15 minutes is all the free one will let me have. Notice up here, you can either record from the screen, all right, everybody get ready to be scared, or I can record from, it says, so which camera do you want to use? Well, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, camera out here. Or I can do both. Now, if you do both, what happens is, it literally will put your webcam in the shot which what you're recording. Would you want to do that? No, nah, you know, kind of up to you to decide. Um, there he is. Oh my God, there he is with his sunglasses on top of his head and the camera's a little high, but the point is there I am. I can be a part of the shot, okay? I'm not going to be a part of the shot. I want to be the shot. I could do that as well. Goodness gracious, I hope that didn't scare everybody in the room. Okay, so there we are. At the point when I get things set up the way that I want them to be, I can now go and 
hit record. Gives me a little countdown so I can clear my throat or whatever. And now I'm talking. And now I'm showing. And everything that's happening on the screen, it's now recording it. So if I need to do something where I would show someone how to use one of the simulations that we pulled over from FET, or if I just wanted to show someone how to do something, I can record everything that is on my screen along with my little face up there in the corner. When I'm done, and this is where it really sits up, when I'm done, what it does is I click on done, or I can click on trash if I don't like it, click on done, and then this pops up. And so as you can see, I can save it down as a video file, a raw video file, which I can turn around and upload into my um, wonderful Google Classroom by using the paperclip, the attachment. Or I can upload it to Screencast-O-Matic, which will give me, when I do that, it will give me a link or YouTube. And when I do that, it's asking me to uh, give it access to my YouTube account, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when I do that, it brings me into my YouTube account, and it says, I want to be able to do all this stuff to your YouTube account. And I'll just say, sure, go ahead. And it'll say, done. Notice that it lets me title it. It's already telling me it's going to go into my account. So I'll just give it a quick little test. Now, I'll tell you right now, this is probably not going to work because the university doesn't allow us to upload to YouTube. Go figure. So when I am talking to you all through video, then when I send out the weekly previews and all that, that's downstairs in the uh, studio at my house where all that gets created. There you go. Now it's going to put it into YouTube, which it won't because we're not allowed to do that here. Once you get it into YouTube, well, look at that. I lied. I've been screaming about this long enough. Maybe they decided to change it. Let's go look. It's still being processed. But you can see that I can do one of two things. I can take the link from here, throw it over into my uh, Google Classroom, or I could just look at the title that I have here, and I could search for that using the YouTube link uh, inside Classroom. You all wouldn't believe. Well, yeah, you all can see it. My tabs up here are rather frightening how many I have open. So that's screencasting, and that's all there is to it. I mean, screencasting is probably one of the easiest things to do to help your students hear it, see it again. Uh, it helps you because you have that rare opportunity to actually have the flow start, middle, finish without being interrupted. Uh, I'll give you some hints, some uh, recommendations. Don't video uh, more than seven minutes. If it takes you more than seven minutes to explain something, you need to make it a part one, part two. Uh, you just won't hold their attention that long, past seven minutes, what Rosen told us. So I had a, a young lady who taught uh, geometry, high school geometry. She came to my office and was just crying because she said, my kids aren't getting geometry. And so she sat there and I asked her to teach me her geometry. And in about 15, 20 minutes, I realized she was an excellent teacher. She knew her stuff. So we just sat there and I said, have you ever thought about creating a YouTube channel? By the way, this is back when YouTube channels were brand new. And I said, let's make a YouTube channel. And every day you sit down at the end of the day and make a video that's no more than seven minutes long that recaps what just happened in your classroom. Because by the time you get to that, you are done but it's still in your head, what you did right, what you did wrong. I said, now, if you don't work that way, go home, rest, relax, but then come back to it and make it. She did it right after school. Then what we did is we turned on the analytics inside her YouTube channel so you could see who was visiting, who wasn't visiting. 
she was so she was so funny because she would come in and she would come in and text me about the number of people who had visited her site. And so the question then that she actually did research on was do the kids who actually come in and view the YouTube the little mini lessons or recaps, what do you want to call them? Does it affect their grade positively, negatively versus the kids who didn't do it? And you know what the answer is. It positively affected it. So now she was all excited about how she could make the YouTube then be even bigger. In other words, she wanted the YouTube things to have like, um, well, tests, formative assessment in them. So after you watch the YouTube video, do this, do this, do this. And I told her, I said, let me show you the coolest thing out there. And that's where I'm going to leave it with, because I want to show you the coolest that's out there next week. And that's Edpuzzle. So with the Edpuzzle, what she was able to do was to bring it all full circle. So you could create that video using Screencast-O-Matic. You could then upload that into your YouTube channel, pull it back in to an Edpuzzle, and then you could add your voice and you could add, or you could add your formative assessment inside your video. Or you can take any video, it doesn't have to be yours, but any video, and you can take control of it. You could talk, watch this, do this, here's the assessment, so on and so on, all the way through it. So that will be what we will do next week. Let's make sure we understand what we're doing for this time. You are going to create content that is irresistibly engaging. We want to make sure that that content hits these areas that you like to, I thought you like to, that Dr. Fullen talks about, that we need critical thinking and problem solving. We need things to be a way for kids to communicate, collaborate, creative thinking and imagination. These are the kinds of things that if we can start doing with what we teach, then we have pretty well licked the irresistibly engaging. I told you I would like you to watch Selecti's video here, uh, about his levels of engagement. He has some really interesting things to look there. All you are doing is you're going to create an interactive lesson, one lesson, that's in your Google Classroom that reflects the irresistibly engaging criteria. I've given you tons of things to play with. You don't have to use all of them. You can use just one. Find the one that you think is fun, that gets your juices flowing. So under simulations, well, that's easy. Go in there and find one of the FET simulations that you like, put it in, set it up so it's actually something kids would respond to, or, presentations would be the Bunsies, okay? And in the Bunsies, you would have the images and the videos, um, and you would have the ability then to have kids on one page get everything done. And as I said, the Buncee can be set up so that what they do in the Buncee page, if you have a paid account, can feed back. In other words, the results can feed back uh, into your classroom. And then we looked at uh, Screencast-O-Matic that allows you to, to literally record what you're doing on your screen and then um, place it into YouTube. And then, as I said, next week, we'll take a look at how we could use Edpuzzle to even add assessment into that. We'll be looking at, uh, as I said, we'll be looking at formative assessment, summative assessment, and we'll be looking at Ipsative assessment, which I'm really, really interested in, frankly, because um, Ipsative assessment is what we all use. I don't know about you, but every day when I get up, I go to scale, and I have in my mind a goal that I'm trying to reach. When I get in the pool here at the University of Louisville, I have a goal, which was one mile in 45 minutes. I'm at one hour, so I'm getting there. That's Ipsative assessment. And wouldn't it be interesting if we could have kids basically set up their goals? What do I want to learn? We would provide them what the goals look like, but it'd make the selection about what that's going to be. When we look at things like uh, Google Forms, Google Forms has so much 
power in it now that it's very definitely something worth playing with and it's built in now. As I said before, Socrative, if you are a high school person, you need to look at this. And then here's Nearpod, which is almost Nearpod in Jefferson County. I think they have a, a site license for it in Jefferson County now. Nearpod is the one that everybody is all excited about. We started using Nearpod about six years ago. The interesting thing about Nearpod, for those of you like Carrie, um, is you can create content you can sell through Nearpod. You have to go through and become a Nearpod uh, certified teacher. My PhD student, she went through and, and got herself Nearpod certified and she has, she's a math uh, teacher, high school math. And she went in and got herself Nearpod certified and she sells stuff through here. Now, it's not a lot of money unless you hit, you know, the magic lesson that everybody just has to have. And all of a sudden, you know, that, that $7 adds up real quick. And then, like I said, we'll do Ed Puzzle. So I know this was fast. Uh, I, I thought if we could break it up, it would give you the time to have a chance to kind of breathe and get this done because, my dear friends, after we do this next week, we are finished. Um, we will do this, which is just for giggles, to be quite frank and honest with you. We're going to look at coding, um, programming coding and game development. This, I've got everything in here that you'll just take you by the hand and lead you down the, the rosy path to get this done. Why have I put this in here? Well, the state of Kentucky has now uh, written an entire curriculum on coding and programming. Well, didn't that exist before, Steve? It existed in the sense of you did it through a different organization. NICREC would be one. Um, what's the other ones that they use? They, there were others that you did it. Well, Microsoft coding and, and of course, Java, Flash, all that. But this is more related to uh, robotics. Uh, we're going to look at just Scratch because Scratch is too much fun. And we'll do that. And then that's your next thing would be your final. And your final is very straightforward. It's right here. Nothing's ever hidden from you. So if you want to go diving into the final and look, take a look at that, you go right ahead. And then we will be finished. I will not be here on Thursday, April something. I'll send it out to you. I have to go down to the um, STLP conference in Lexington, where I am the creator, judge, uh, proselytizer for podcasting in schools in the state of Kentucky. It's April 13th. 18th. 18th. Okay. We'll be done. And uh, that, I'm going to have a lot of fun. You won't be there, will you? Do you do STLP? Of course I do. You do? Yes. All right. Well, we'll text each other. We'll find each other when we're down there, okay? I'll tell you where I'll, tell you where I'll be. I'll be over in uh, Rupp Arena. Uh-huh. And I'll be in the visitor's locker room. Okay. That sounds fun. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, I'll tell you, the first year that I was ever there, uh, they put me into the Wildcats locker room. Mm. And that was crazy because everybody wanted to, once they saw the door was open, everybody wanted to come in and go stand in front of the locker where, you know, Cousin's locker was or whoever and get their picture taken. Now, where I am now, it's still a locker room, and one, one side of it is a bathroom with no doors. Uh, <laughs> and, you know. Kids kind of come in and they just still are in awe of the place. They're like, "This is the Wildcat." No, it's not the Wildcat locker room. It's the visitor locker room. Well, still, we're still, you know, it's a great place. So we'll find each other. Okay. Sounds great. How many kids are you gonna bring? Um, we're we haven't decided quite yet. I I allow my if my kids compete at regionals, even if they don't get invited to mm -hmm. state, I still let them go with us. Right. Um, and then I've got a couple of kids interested in the racing to the future car event, which yeah. we've never 
participated in. So I think I'm going to take a couple of kids just to scope that out and see if that's something they want to do next year. So I don't, 20th. Don't you have a junior engineer? I do. He's All a right. senior this year. He'll have to be there. Yes. So, yeah, we'll find each other. This time we will find each other. Yes. I, I disappear for about three hours. Now, do you hang around to the very, very end? We do not. Okay. We have to bring the bus back. Well, I'll be there, you know, all the way to the end when I get to go on stage and say hi to David Couch. And he, he looks at me and goes, are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and I, and I tell you, I, you can always spot me because I'll have something on that is very definitely U of L. Yeah. Um, that's always fun because I go up on that stage in the middle of Rupp Arena and people are like, what is that Louisville guy doing up there? Or when the kids come in to do their presentations, um, they always kind of sit there and stare at me and they go, are you from the University of Louisville? Yes, I am. And then my friend who goes with me, who is also a former uh, programmer, et cetera, et cetera, he graduated from UK. So he'll have all of his UK regalia on. I don't wear regalia. I'll just have something like a vest that has a you know cardinal bird head on it or something like that. But mm -hmm. he, he wears the regalia. It's really kind of funny. Okay, I'm finished. You got any questions for me, dear? I don't. I'm ready to go to soccer practice. All right. Have fun. As always, everybody, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, I have been looking into the live text, and what I have been seeing in the live text is excellent. It's outstanding, as a matter of fact. But if you're concerned and you want to point me towards something, would you please go in and look at this? Because I really haven't gone in, I've only gone in and looked. I haven't graded anything. I'll start doing that uh, actually tomorrow. But uh, if you want me to go in and specifically at something to make sure you're getting it right, just throw that out to me in a text. I did it for someone today. Uh, those of you who have me in your Google Classrooms, every time you put something in there, I'm, it's telling me that. So... We're in good shape. As always, if you need me, it's 502-457-2937. Look forward to seeing you, Carrie. And have a good time at soccer. Bye now, everybody. See you. Bye.